says the latest Mediterranean tragedy could amount to the largest loss of life during a migrant crossing to Europe. For more on that, we're now joined live on the line from Geneva by the UNHCR spokesperson, Adrian Edwards. We're actually speaking to him on screen at the moment. Adrian, now what's been the UNHCR's response to this latest tragedy in the Mediterranean? Well, April 2015 is clearly proving to be the cruelest month. We've had something in the region of 1,600 deaths on the Mediterranean just this month. We haven't seen anything like this level before. The highest level previously was from September of last year with about 1,000 uh, dead then. There has been, I think, enormous shock at this incident. We see many incidents on the Mediterranean, but the sheer scale of this uh, and the drama around it is really something uh, that I think is profoundly shocking uh, all of us. Now, Adrian, the thing is, though, this isn't a new crisis. We've known that as the weather gets warmer, more migrants will try getting across. Warnings have been issued for months now. Has the response from both Africa and European authorities been too slow? Well, clearly the response hasn't been sufficient for the scale of the problem. If you step back a little bit and look at behind this, you see one, a record level of forced displacement globally. More than 51 million people forcibly displaced at the end of 2013. We know those numbers are rising still. Two, you have rising numbers of people now crossing the Mediterranean, including many people from uh, countries where they're fleeing conflict. There's increasing number of refugees amongst this flow. And three, sadly, we're seeing a rising death toll uh, as people make this incredibly dangerous journey. So there needs to be a much more robust uh, response. Search and rescue uh, uh, capacities on the Mediterranean haven't been adequate in our view for it. They have to be stepped up so that we can do something about it and try to reduce this appalling level of loss of lives. Um, Adrian, there's also been a focus on what Europe is doing about this crisis, but what is Africa's role in all this? What does the African Union, for instance, need to do to help stop this crisis from the African side? Well, there are many layers to this crisis. If you go back to the root causes, then clearly it's looking at what can be done to halt conflicts, to prevent conflicts, and with migrants to find the economic conditions to, uh, if you like, disincentivize people to move. We know those things are difficult, and we know, unfortunately, with conflicts and wars in the world today, there is little immediate prospect of bringing a halt to the world's major conflicts. But that's step one. Really now, in the absence of answers there, then we have to focus on this saving lives. And that means one on the Mediterranean, what can be done to prevent people drowning? And then uh, really to look at countries along the route, including in Africa, because many of these people making these journeys are coming through sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, we have had initiatives only relatively recently in Africa, the Khartoum process, for example, 28 countries, um, involved in that, the EU, the African Union and others. It's an anti-people uh, smuggling initiative, if you like. So uh, it's about addressing those kind of things, smuggling of people along the way, which is a serious problem. Also looking at the conditions in which people are. If you want people to remain where they are, there have to be better vocational, better educational opportunities. Uh, there has to be better information about the dangers of traveling on these routes. So there are things that are happening in Africa and, of course, uh, in many African countries. We hope to see these, these kind of measures increasing too. Uh, but this is a truly global problem. It's a multi-country problem. It does have to be dealt with at every stage from the start of the journey right through to and after arrival in Europe. All right, Adrian, thanks very much for speaking as this to, to us this evening. We're speaking there to Adrian Edwards of the UNHCR.